the most powerful tool that the establishment, that the corporatocracy have in their armory is our apathy. Open Mind Conference, the third edition already in Holland. Um, the, ch the topic, main topic was from moving from awareness to action and change. Could you share your perspective on this? Absolutely. I think that over the last um, 15 years, since the events of 9-11, we've been through an unprecedented period of people actually seeking truth. And although in a previous interview with you, I did make the observation that I didn't think that awareness or global awareness of the 9-11 being inside job would bring about catalytic change, I do think that the events of 9-11 are absolutely catalytic in terms of awakening people's curiosity. And although it's not the only portal that triggers this curiosity and this uh, research, there's no question that 9-11 is probably the most significant global event that does cause people to question their version of reality. And once they start to realise the degree to which they've been hoodwinked on this event, then they start to look at other events. They'll start to look at more recent events like the Madrid bombing, the London bombings of 7-7, uh, more recent events like Charlie Hebdo, um, uh, the Brussels attacks. And then they'll go back into history and they'll start looking at things like the uh, Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, um, the uh, USS Liberty event, um, the Vietnam War, and even Pearl Harbor. And then once people start to join these dots and they see that they have been seriously duped, then they start to look at other things. So they start to look at the deception of things like uh, the cancer and the suppression of cancer cures and, and, um, and the development of things like chemotherapy to protect the radium industry. You know, Codex Alimentarius, this agenda that's been around since 1962 to literally eradicate all natural health care and also uh, destroy all natural farming. And this is all, of course, building up to this global corporatocracy. And then people look at things like the geoengineering and they look at the fluoride in the water and they start to see this phenomenal and unbelievable attack on humanity. And so there is a period, once you start to realise that you were duped, you've got to go through this information gathering. And th this is the period where one is a truth seeker. But then there comes a point where, and, and this can take many years, by the way, but there comes a point where you have to say, OK, I've now got a lot of information. And basically, the world in which we live in is a hellhole, ruled by socio-psychopaths. And if I don't do anything, then I'm condemning future generations to lives of unimaginable abject misery. And, and that's, not a, um, uh, that's not just conjecture, because you've only got to extrapolate where we're at right now, and you can see that it, that's exactly what we're condemning them to. You know, lives of poverty, of, of serious austerity, and you know, really very little to look forward to, unless they are <laughs> effectively prostituting themselves to the corporatocracy in return for the high salary or you know, the, the trinkets that go with uh, effectively doing what your socio-psychopathic masters want you to do. So taking from the information gathering of truth-seeking, it then go, has to go to the next level. You have to graduate into activism. Now, activism doesn't necessarily have to mean sort of outright political activism. Activism can be simply sowing seeds around your community and encouraging other people to investigate this for themselves. But where many, many truth campaigners unfortunately mess up is they, they become evangelical. You know, and they want to go, do you realise 9-11 was an inside job and you need to see that? And people are going, whoa. And, and what they don't realise is that they're actually turning people off. They're actually putting a block up and, and they're, what they're doing is they're helping the establishment to label truth seekers as the nutters, as the crazies. So, you know, we have to be smart. And, and the way that we have to do this initially is just to sow seeds. 
you know, to drop something in there or encourage people to look at it for themselves. You know, for 9-11, I mean, of course, the classic is Building 7. You know, it wasn't hit by a plane, and yet it was the third steel-structured building to collapse, supposedly through fire, on the same day. The other two were at least allegedly hit by planes. And the BBC, of course, announcing the collapse 15, 20 minutes before it actually collapsed. So even if it's just sowing that seed, and then the Pentagon, of course, you know, no remains of a plane, plane flying in at mm-hmm. almost zero feet altitude and mm-hmm. not a mark on the grass. So you, know, you can say to people, look at the evidence, look at the pictures, and, and just trigger their curiosity. Okay, but that's, that's one related to the, the information for transformation to change. You also spoke about the activism, and you have some experience with this re- regarding the fracking yeah. uh, issue in the UK. Could you briefly touch upon this? Well, the, that is, um, again, it's the same process as what I'm talking about here. It's stimulation of curiosity. Because I certainly didn't go into communities, this is three years ago now, where I did a 63-day tour around the country. Um, because I knew I needed to prepare the country for what was coming. And so, I mean, I didn't go in there and say, you really need to take a look at what's coming here because this is going to really mess up your water. No, I went around there and I said, look, you know, this is the government agenda. It's very clear. The government wants to start exploiting unconventional gas. Let's take a look at what's happened elsewhere in the world and, you know, show them the physical evidence of what's occurred in the US and in Australia where, you know, everywhere this industry has become established, it's contaminated the the water, the soil, and the air. So you make the observation, you say to people, you know, this is the impact it's going to have. Is this what you want for your environment? And you know what? When I was doing this, and I was explaining this to people, people would be sitting there going, oh, that's terrible. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. Really really terrible. And then I'd say, and the other effect is that wherever this industry manifests, the impact it has on property prices is catastrophic. And people go, what? My, my house price is going to fall in value? And initially, that used to frustrate me because I'm thinking, you know, well, people should be getting motivated by the fact that the water, the soil, and the air is going to be contaminated. But what's really motivating them is the fact that their property price is going to devalue. And in the end, I thought, you know what? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what button you need to push to get them motivated. But once they are motivated, once they do start looking for themselves, then eventually they'll start to realise that this is something that's very important to them. And a percentage, not everyone, but a percentage will start to say, you know what, we need to do something. Yeah, and regarding this percentage, the people who are watching this and they want to um, transform their awareness into action, what would you tell them? It doesn't matter what you do. You know, and, and for some people, it takes them a while to work out how they can best contribute. Everybody has different skills. Everybody has different resources, whether it's time, money, um, capability, you know, whatever. Some people are great at uh, speaking about it. Some people prefer writing about it. You know, whatever, it doesn't matter. But, and it doesn't matter what the subject. I mean, we're talking about fracking here, but it could be vaccinations. It could be, uh, especially the preschool vaccination agenda. It could be uh, geoengineering, it could be GM foods. It, all of these issues need people to get involved. And it doesn't matter what subject it is you get involved, and maybe more than one, but pick up something. Because ultimately, ultimately, we're not yet at a critical mass, you know, in terms of any of these elements, but the level of awareness is growing all the time. And I'm sure many people watching this will be familiar with the 100th monkey effect. Well, I don't know how close we are to the 100th monkey but we're ever getting closer and closer. And eventually, something will tip. And when we do reach that tipping point, and I don't know what it'll be on, it might be on the fiat monetary system, it might be on geoengineering, it might be on GM foods, it might be on vaccination, it might be on sort of uh, suppression of um, cancer treatment, effective cancer treatments, it might be on suppression of um, energy sources. But some, when it does come, I think it's gonna be like a, the domino. Whichever the first domino is to fall, then the whole lot will fall, and then we'll see you know, change beyond our wildest dreams. Mm-hmm. But the, the counsel I offer is, you know, don't rush into doing something. You don't need to. You know, it's better to be 
going into something with a commitment that it's going to be long term than to do something for a couple of weeks and say, well, that didn't work and then back off. Because this is a long term issue. I mean, you know, I'm 60 this year and I readily accept and acknowledge that I may well not see the ultimate outcome, whatever that, that may be. You know, the opposition work on multi generational agendas. We have to work on the principle that this work could well be a multi generational campaign to oppose this horrendous genocidal and ecocidal agenda that they're perpetrating on humanity. Okay, and in the long end, last question, are you uh, positive or uh, pessimistic about this, about the outcome? Oh, of course I'm positive. I mean, if I wasn't, I'd go off and play golf somewhere and just enjoy, you know, the remaining time I have on this mortal coil. But, um, you know, I enjoyed the first 40 years that I lived on this planet, you know. Um, I enjoyed my career, perversely. But there comes a point where you can no longer put the blinkers over your eyes every day. You have to say, you know what, if I don't ta start taking responsibility, then I'm effectively contributing to the enormity of, um, of, of this agenda that is being perpetrated on humanity by my apathy. And this is the issue for me. The most powerful tool that the establishment, that the corporatocracy have in their armory is our apathy. They don't care why we don't participate. They'll do anything to avoid us participating. They'll keep us entertained with sports and reality TV and you know, um, the drugs, you know, the drink, whatever. They'll, they'll do anything to keep us amused. But that's their strength. They can distract, you know, we have to step through that. So we, and it doesn't need a big percentage. Even if it's just three or four percent of the population who became determined to bring about the changes that we all know we, we need to see, then the changes will happen sooner rather than later. But I am positive in the outcome.